Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from you from all around the world. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, send me your question and I will do my best to answer it. Uh, here's just a hint for some of you. When you send a question, those that are extremely long or that have multiple questions, there's just no way on earth I have time to answer those. So if you make your question kind of to the point, there's a much better chance that yours will be chosen as one of the ones that I read. Okay, let's get started. Reese from Derby, Britain said, Did Carcharodontosaurus eat Spinosaurus? And was Spinosaurus bigger? And who would win in a fight? Well, Reese, uh, Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus lived together, but Spinosaurus was a much different dinosaur, considerably different. Uh, not really designed, in my opinion, for full-on confrontation. So in a fight between the two, Carcharodontosaurus, in my opinion, much heavier dinosaur, much stronger, certainly would have been uh, more than a Spinosaurus could handle. Now, would Carcharodontosaurus eat a Spinosaurus? That's a tough one. You know, that's a tough one. We don't really know if predatory dinosaurs had a taste for other predatory dinosaurs. Oftentimes, I think they would kill other predators, but that's simply to get rid of the competition, not so much to eat. So my best guess would be that yes, Carcharodontosaurus, given the opportunity, would try to kill a Spinosaurus, but I don't know necessarily if he would eat them. All right, uh, Jasapan from Nyborg, Denmark says, who would win in a fight between Utah Raptor or a Gorgonopsid. Well, uh, Jasper, th those are such t distinctively different animals that it would not be much of a fight. In my opinion, even though the Gorgonopsians are pretty nasty critters, they lived in the Permian long before Utah Raptor, even though they, uh, even though there were some nasty, nasty guys and they had some pretty effective weapons, and in some case, almost uh, body armor, uh, Utah Raptor was such a much more advanced animal. It would have been much smarter, much more intelligent, much quicker, much more agile, and certainly equipped with some pretty nasty weapons. So in my opinion, if those animals ever came in contact, which they didn't, but if they would have, uh, I think Utah Raptor certainly would have been way too much of a match. All right, Eric from San Jose, California, California says, how does evolution work in a simple answer for students in junior high? Eric, that's a tough one. Um, here's kind of how it works. When you have animals that live within an environment, um, uh, as long as the environment doesn't change, the animals generally don't as well. Let's take, for instance, um, a family of birds. Uh, let's say this family of birds, let's use albatross. Albatross, in order to take off, require a lot of wind to blow. Uh, their body is too big to just take off running and flap their wings. They have a tough time. They almost need to turn into the wind and run to be able to get lift. Well, let's say that where these albatross live on an island, for some reason the wind ceased to blow because of some environmental change. Well, only the smallest albatross would have the ability to continue to fly because it doesn't have to move as much mass. So it might be able to run and jump and flap its wings like other birds and take off with ease. Well, that would mean then that that albatross would be better suited for flight if he remained small. Whereas, let's say he had a brother who was much bigger, a much bigger, but then could not fly. Well, in order for that bird to survive, it would have to change its lifestyle, and it would have to change its diet. Well, over long periods of time, uh, an animal will pass its genes down to the next generation, and for instance, if your parents were tall, chances are you would be tall. Well, if the bird that could fly passed his genes on, chances are his offspring is going to be smaller, and therefore they would continue to be able to fly with relative ease. The bigger brother that could never fly would pass his genes on, and chances are his siblings would lose the ability to fly because they don't need it. And that's basically the concept. Changing environments cause animals to change to be able to adapt to the environment and be able to take advantage of different food sources. I hope that kind of sums it up. That's the, kind of the short answer, Eric. I wish I could give you a clearer description. Okay, uh, Smith Tob from London, England says, Hey, Mr. Blassing. Hey, Smith Tob. It's nice to hear from you. You can always call me George or Dinosaur George, but I appreciate your uh, respect. He says, I have two questions. If a T-Rex that was 40 feet long came across a younger, larger, less experienced T-Rex, who would win in a fight? It's always tough to guess these things because that's simply what they are. They're, they're absolute total guesses because there are so many variables that could impact something like this. But... In my opinion, experience always trumps size uh, and strength. Experience is much more important than your size or your strength. 
it doesn't do you any good to be 40 feet long if your competitor knows more about fighting. So in my opinion, Smith Tab, I would believe that it would be the experienced Tyrannosaur that would win a potential fight. Uh, second question is, last year a new T-Rex specimen was found. It was 62 feet long. They nicknamed this T-Rex Tyrannosaurus Imperator. Do you think that it was really that big? Uh, thanks if you answer this. I know you have a busy schedule. P.S. I'm a huge fan of yours. It's very kind of you, uh, Smith Tab. It's very kind of you to say that. Um, you know, if I remember correctly, I think that's been refudiated. The idea that this dinosaur was as big as they claimed he was. I don't think he is, I think what they discovered is some of the bones that were found were considerably large, but as they found more, they found that those bones were more in line with an average sized Tyrannosaurus Rex. So to the best of my knowledge, I do not believe that Tyrannosaurus Imperator is a valid name anymore, and I do not believe that that Tyrannosaur was anywhere near 62 feet long. Okay, Jens from Hyo, Sweden. Hey, DG, my question is, could Megaraptor be the biggest meat eater? Do you think, what do you think about this? Well, Jens, uh, Megaraptor is certainly a pretty big dinosaur, but he's not anywhere near as big as some of the others. Um, he doesn't reach the size, I don't believe, of Tyrannosaurus or uh, um, uh, even Albertosaurus, for that matter. I don't think he got back that big. Megaraptor is kind of an interesting story. When they found the Megaraptor claw, it was thought to be a giant member of the Dromaeosaur family. That's why its name is Megaraptor. Dromaeosaurs are basically raptors. That's the scientific term for raptors. Um, it's so funny. One of my good friends, Captain Dave, uh, uh, Captain Dave is a public speaker and a guy that loves paleontology. He's out in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I think you can look up Captain Dave online. I think it's Captain, C-A-P-N, Captain Dave's Dinosaurs. Uh, Dave, uh, Captain Dave, it's a good friend of mine, and for years, Captain Dave was telling me, you know, you got to stop telling people in school that Mega Raptor is a member of the Raptor family. He said because I think its thumb looks more like the thumb of Baryonyx, and I always used to kind of dismiss that and go, you know, Dave, uh, I love you like a brother, but you're insane. There's no such thing. But then they found more pieces of him, and come to find out, Dave was absolutely 100% accurate. He was right. Megaraptor is actually closer related to Baryonyx and Spinosaurus and, and um, uh, uh, some of those, Suchomimus and some of those guys. So his size was not gigantic, even though that claw is big. But when you look at it, if indeed that's a thumb claw, um, he's, he's probably closer, my guess, to being around 25 to maybe 32 feet long, something like that. Um, and that doesn't put him anywhere near as big as some of the other guys. Okay, Brent, and you know what makes me sick about that, Jens, is I have to admit that Captain Dave was right and I was wrong. That is, you people at home have no idea how devastating that is for me to admit that that guy was right. <laughs> I hope he never sees this video because I'll never hear the end of it. All right, Brendan from Fox Island, Washington. Good day to you, Dinosaur George. Brendan, good day to you, buddy. It's always good to hear from you. He says, I would like to know how big did Carnotaurus get? Your friend, Brendan. Well, Carnotaurus is not nearly as big as we once thought. I think the estimates of size of him is that he's like, gosh, 25 to 30 feet long. Something like that, maybe even not that big, maybe not even 30 feet. Um, you know, guys, I wish I had time to do some research when I get these questions. I just don't, I have to do all this from memory. But if memory serves me, I think he's about 25 to maybe 30 feet long, not big, has some of the smallest arms of any dinosaur I've ever seen. Uh, you think T-Rex's arms are small, man, that guy's arms are almost invisible, tiny. Um, all right, you guys, that's it for this time. Thank you all for writing to me. I'll do my best to answer as many of these as I can. For those of you who want to ask me a question, like I said, go to DinosaurGeorge.com. And while you're there, check out other things. Um, join my Facebook list. I have a tremendous amount of good friends uh, on Facebook. For everybody who's watching this on Facebook, hi, it's good to see you all. Um, uh, so join my Facebook and follow, uh, follow me on Twitter. And um, if you have a question, send it to me. Until next time, everybody, you young people out there, make sure to practice your reading because good reading skills are important. And everybody should really have good manners and use good manners every single day of your life. There's nothing more important. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you and I will see you guys again soon.